Hello, Burlington parents. Thank you so much for joining me for this middle and high school technology orientation presentation. My name is Jen Sheffer. I am a digital learning coach here in Burlington Public Schools. Members of the BPS digital learning team are our director, Dennis Villano, Michelle Artizoni, Paula Weldon, Dan Donoff, Linda O'Leary, and Leroy Wong. In addition to digital learning coaches, we also have an IT department. And those IT members are Jose de Sousa, Eric Calandrello, Theo Goulas, Emerson Perez, and Fadine Soterio. Together, we work very closely to support students and staff. Our digital learning team will assist students and staff with how to best utilize applications and websites in the classroom, in the curriculum. And we do this through collaboration with staff. We also provide professional development and we work closely with our librarians for digital literacy uh, education. Our IT department will assist with actual device repairs and uh, fixing devices, supporting the network, supporting our phone system, projectors and peripherals. They'll assist students with account and password recovery, and they work closely with the town. If and when your child needs support with their device, the first step is for them to communicate with their homeroom, homeroom teacher. This is whether it's an actual problem with the device, the, the physical device itself, if it's a cracked screen or something's not working properly. Um, also, if there's an application that's not working properly. So um, that is the first step, talking with the homeroom teacher. From there, the teacher is going to work with the technology department to support the student. If the iPad is broken or damaged, it will need to be replaced or fixed, um, possibly in file, filing an insurance claim if your family decides to purchase insurance. Uh, but I do want to emphasize that you will not have your child bring the iPad to the Apple Store to be replaced. So please refrain from doing that. Talk with the homeroom teacher and we will support you from that point forward. If the iPad is damaged, it does need to be replaced within three weeks of the damage occurring. Uh, students, if they file an insurance claim or if they decide, if you decide as a family to use another type of company, if you choose not to get insurance, but you get a repair number, you will provide that uh, claim number or that repair number to fading material in our IT department and a loaner iPad will be given to your child while they're waiting for their device to be repaired or while they're waiting for a new device to be uh, sent to them. If you receive a brand new device with a new serial number, it's very important for you as a mom or dad to contact the insurance company with the new serial number so that that new device will continue to receive coverage. Um, and if you do have an insurance policy with Worth Ab Group, which is the company we go through, um, you'll want to renew that policy reg um, annually, regardless of when you purchased it. So you can purchase insurance at any point in the year. We highly recommend you purchase it in September, right at the beginning of the school year. Um, but if you decide to not purchase until, say, October or November, the policy will expire in October or November, and at which point you'll renew it. Um, our iPad program for the middle and high school students here in Burlington allows students to take their devices home with them. Uh, that being said, the iPads are still managed by BPS security and have certain restrictions placed on them. Uh, that's done with our mobile device management system called Mosul. Uh, students will be using their BPS Google Workspace accounts to access the resources um, that their uh, teachers send to them predominantly through Google Classroom. Um, and they'll also be using Gmail to communicate with teachers um, and uh, uh, many other types of Google apps. Uh, teachers will be setting the expectations on how and when the devices are used in the classroom and which apps students will be using. Students will also be uh, given the responsible use policy and a handbook that helps guide their behavior on the device and the expectations for caring for that device. Um, as a family, you will be asked to review and complete the BPS Statement of Responsibility in order to use the BPS iPad for the 21-22 school year. You are signing this Statement of Responsibility and agreeing to uh, taking responsibility of a $294 device, a $75 keyboard case, the $20 charging cable, and a $10 charging brick.
There's a required Google form with information on it that's available on the BPS website. And all families and students in grades six through 12 must complete this Google form to be able to use that BPS iPad for this upcoming school year, as I mentioned. Students are not able to access the Wi-Fi at the middle school or the high school with a personal device, um, and that includes their phone. However, we do allow seniors at the high school to give back their school-issued device, and they can then add a personal device. So if they have their own laptop, for example, that they want to put on the Wi-Fi at the high school, seniors only are allowed to do that. They should uh, contact Fading Soterial in the BPS um, IT department for support on connecting their personal device to the high school Wi-Fi. So that is allowed, um, however, not phones. Um, it would just be restricted to an iPad or excuse me, an iPad or a laptop, personal laptop. I mentioned earlier, caring for the iPad is essential. Um, this is a critical learning tool that your child will be using every single day. Um, it should definitely come to school charged, so please remind your child to charge it at home. Um, there, will, there are not chargers available for students at school, so again, please reiterate, they have the charger, they can bring it with them to school, but we should really be um, reminding our kids to charge them at night. Um, also reminding our kids not to eat or drink near the iPad to avoid um, any accidents or spills, and definitely emphasizing when transporting the iPad to and from school on the bus or in their vehicle, it's really important to care for that device properly when they're traveling. Um, we do have cases on the iPads in, um, for students in grades three through nine that offer protection, but it's still important to emphasize um, it is a fragile device and um, it should be taken care of accordingly. Um, accidents do happen, so we encourage families to purchase insurance. It's not required, but it is optional. Um, as the parent of an incoming freshman myself, I would definitely uh, purchase insurance. You can do that through our company that we've been working with for years now. It's called Worth Ab Group. It covers cracked screens, spills in liquid submersion, accidental damage if a student accidentally drops it. Theft and vandalism, you'll want to file a police report if, if it is stolen. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but fire, flood, natural disasters are also covered and a power surge caused by lightning. So it offers uh, excellent coverage and it again, it is highly recommended that you purchase the insurance for the device. Uh, the coverage is for $294, it's for one year a one-year term, it's a $0 deductible, and the premium is $59.60. So that is a lot more affordable than having to cover $294 out of pocket. So again, this is why we recommend the insurance, and we recommend purchasing it as early in the school year as possible. You'll need your child's LACID number, that is their unique six-digit identification number, as well as the serial number of the iPad, which you can find in settings. For any and all questions regarding insurance, um, I've mentioned her name a couple times now, Fading Soterial is in our BPS IT department, and this is who you will want to contact if you have additional questions about insurance. And certainly once you have submitted a claim, you'll be working with Fading on that. Google accounts for our students are also a critical um, digital learning tool. So um, your child's Google account is something that they should have memorized by now and at the middle school level, hopefully they have. Um, this Google account is their LACID. I mentioned that six digit unique number, followed by at bps121.org. Uh, students can only email their teachers or other members of the BPS domain, so they cannot email anybody outside of our domain. Google account passwords are also critical for students to memorize, keep those confidential, um, keep them in a safe place, um, and helping your child to memorize their password if they haven't already is also highly recommended. Uh, strong passwords are going to have a mixture of upper and lower case letters and special characters. They do need to be a minimum of eight characters. Um, so again, we recommend that um, your child creates a very strong password and to not give this password out to anybody. 
We also have um, Aspen support. So Aspen is the student information system that we use here in Burlington. And this is the portal for students to access their grades. If your child has uh, forgotten their password and needs their Aspen password reset, if it happens to be different than their Google account password, they will email aspen at bpsk12.org and request that their Aspen password be reset. Um, so again, if you have any questions about Aspen or you need any type of support with that, you or your child, it would be the, the contact for that is aspen at bpsk12.org. And again, this is to access grades. We also use a single sign-on service called Clever, and students use Clever to access several of our core apps in grades six through eight. Um, this allows students to log into multiple apps with just one single set of credentials. Um, those credentials are your, your child's Google account and uh, password. So it's really critical. Again, if they haven't memorized it by now, they should have that information memorized. Clever itself is not a, an app. It is a, a website that your children can access through Safari. The um, address is clever.com slash bpsk12. Um, your child will click on login as a student, and then they will click on login with Google. These are screenshots of exactly what that will look like. At this point in time, um, your child ha probably has quite a bit of experience logging into Clever, uh, but this so this is sort of a review for middle and high school students because they have been probably using this for, for many years now. Uh, this is a video that you can actually click on if you need further assistance with uh, logging into Clever. You can show this video to your child if they're new to the district or if they're new to Clever. Um, this video uh, tutorial will help your child do that step by step. We, I mentioned earlier the Google applications that students use here in Burlington extensively. Uh, Google Classroom is our digital workflow app that most teachers use at the middle and high school to send work to students, to collect work from students. Students do word processing with Google Docs. They do presentations with Google Slides. They communicate with Gmail. Uh, they'll do video conferencing with Google Meet. They may fill out surveys or take quizzes using Google Forms, and they'll store everything that they do here as a student in Burlington in Google Drive. So that's our main uh, storage application. So I, I mentioned just um, previously that Google Classroom is used for all classes, courses, and subjects in grades 6 through 12. Um, it's that digital workflow. Uh, teachers give feedback. It allows students to have streamlined organization of their assignments. It also gives due dates of upcoming assignments. Students are able to ask questions and collaborate with each other. Um, they're very powerful um, applications for use in the classroom. We've been using them for years now in Burlington. Um, and parents and guardians can receive email updates on student assignments. And there is a link here in the presentation um, for parents to learn more about Google Classroom. That's from Common Sense Media. So again, your child will be able to stay on top of all of his or her work in Google Classroom. It's an essential learning tool for us here in Burlington. I mentioned earlier, all of um, your child's work will be stored in Google Drive. Google Classroom assignments are also connected to Google Drive, and this is cloud-based storage. We have unlimited storage, so um, that's reassuring to know that your child won't lose any of his or her work, and it's a great way for them to stay organized in a digital space. Mentioned earlier also that we have a mobile device management system. This is um, called Mosul. Um, it controls the applications and the devices themselves with security. Um, there's restrictions on certain apps. Uh, but I do want to mention that this does not include control over cameras. So the uh, camera on the iPad is not controlled. Um, apps are available to your children at home. And updates on those apps can also be available at home. The iPads are filtered um, both online and at school, so uh, inappropriate content, content is filtered and blocked. Online activities are monitored by our IT department. 
Uh, but we also ask for your help in, in partnering with us to have discussions with your children about what's appropriate online and how to keep them safe. So being involved as a parent is um, a great strategy to make sure your child is safe and productive online and demonstrating exceptional digital citizenship. And if you have not um, done so already, we'd encourage you to take a look at the Common Sense Media Parent uh, portal or, or website. They have an, uh, an incredible amount of resources for parents on how to have those discussions with your children and how to keep them safe. Ultimately, students are responsible for their online behavior and what they do online can have um, play a, a big role in their digital identity. It can really impact their future and we want the, those uh, digital identities to be positive and we want students' futures to be impacted in a positive way. So um, if we all work together, we can ensure that that will happen. Um, in terms of the applications and the webs websites that our students are able to use for school, we emphasize only using apps and websites that ensure student and staff data privacy. So every app, every website, Chrome and web extensions are reviewed by members of the BPS digital learning team um, and approved apps and sites are posted on our website. We follow the recommendations of the Student Data Privacy Consortium and we're committed again to making sure that student um, data is, is private. We do not have an app store on the iPad. You'll notice that, that the app store is disabled for students. Rather than going into the app store, students go into our Mosul Manager app, and this is where they can get applications for use in the classroom. I just mentioned that only apps that are approved by the BPS staff and curriculum teams are available. Um, app store restrictions cannot be removed and there's no opt out available for those restrictions. So all students follow the protocol that's set by the IT department. So again, um, if you need technology support, I'm just reiterating that the first step is to communicate with the homeroom teacher. They will contact the de technology department for support. And again, no, no going to the apps, excuse me, the Apple store. We also have a help desk at the high school, and this is a nationally recognized student help desk program. Students in this program can also provide support to students in school during in-school hours and um, help students who may be experiencing some issues with applications or just learning how to use some of the applications. The help desk is located in the upper library at the Burlington High School, and it is led by Leroy Wong. We'd encourage you to stay connected to us as a uh, um, here in the BPS digital learning team and department. We have a website that has a huge, vast collection of updated digital resources, uh, how-to guides, technology learning sessions that we'll be offering. Um, there are three links here on this site. Um, one of which is directly related to families. So if you'd like to stay connected, and we hope you do, um, we'd like you to know exactly what your children are doing on a day-to-day -day basis with technology here at Burlington. Um, so please visit these sites to learn more and stay connected with us. I'd like to thank you for spending some time with me and learning a little bit more about the iPad program here in Burlington. We are looking forward to an excellent 21-22 school year and thank you so much for watching.